Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to start a new series on this channel which is called the what and the how series. Now what exactly we are going to do in this series? I receive a lot of questions over my email, over my Instagram, in the comments of the videos or over my WhatsApp. Now those are the small small questions that what is this thing, how do we do that, how exactly can I accomplish this, what happens if I don't do this, what happens if I do this. I usually write a reply to them but now I feel that it would be good if I could make a small video for all such questions so that it is beneficial to the wider group. So the first question which I am going to answer today is how do I get a data from a transaction item. In case you have a similar question or have any other question you can always drop me a comment or you can just write it to me on the email id which is available on the slide as well as on the description. So let's get started and see how exactly can I get the data from a transaction item. I am in my UiPath orchestrator. I am in my default tenant. This is the community orchestrator cloud.uipath.com. Let us see the scenario. I just navigate to the folder where I have my queue. So I am in the admin folder. In the queue, I have this many queues which I have created. So I can see there are 28 items which are available in the offer letter hired queue, right? So if I simply go here and I say view the transactions. So you could see that these are all the transactions which are available and loaded into the queue. Now the question is how actually I can use all these items in my UiPath Studio. When I say all these items, so if you would see that these are all the individual transactions and in here, if I simply go and click on view details, so these are the details which are available for this transaction item. Now, if I want to do automation using the first name, last name for this one or for this one, how exactly can I do that, right? So for that, let me quickly go back to my UiPath Studio. I go here and I say a new sequence and I call this sequence as get data for the transaction item. And since this is the video one, I'll like to mark it as one and hit create okay so the agenda here we just want to read the value from the transaction item from the queue my sequence is ready so the first activity which i am going to use here is called the get queue item okay drag and drop this activity which is called get queue items it is a simple activity which is asking me to provide the queue name, right? So where is my queue name? The queue name is nothing but this one, HR offered letter hired, right? So I'll go back to the queues so I can copy and paste it directly from here, something like this. This is the name of the queue which we want to read, right? Whenever we are doing a real-time automation, make sure we do not hard code anything. This value should be coming from a config file, an asset or an argument, but it has never to be hard coded like this. Okay, good practice. So get the queue items from the HR queue. Okay, now once I have got all the items, I want to store all of them in this output variable, right? So as we already know, there is a shortcut to create this item. Hit control plus K and create something called output of items or I just say output of all items fine so what would happen UiPath will go and it will load all the items from the queue in this one which is called the enumerable list of queue okay so if I go to the properties I have simply provided the queue name here and stored the output here now here is something which is called the folder path which folder you want to read the data from right so i have multiple folder here so the folder which we are interested in is this one which is called the admin folder so i just go here and in the folder it is a string so i just pass it like this admin folder right because we need to specify right which folder the queue is associated to folder name is provided queue name is provided i go here i save this and once this is extracted before continuing I just want to use a right line activity and I want to see that what is the count right so I just say here let me check the variable output all items output all items dot 
count dot to string that count the number of items which are available in this one right and in here you always has an option to read what all items you want to read right so for example in our situation i am only interested in the new items right so i just go and in the queue status in the queue status i marked the status only to new right so i just go and save this let me go here and i quickly say run the file the robot has completed the execution let me check the output and we could see that i am getting 28 why 28 because we have told only to read the new items now the agenda here is that for all the items which are in new status if i just go here and click on view transactions for all these items we want to use this detail in further automation right chevron benito and all of these details so i go here now this is a list right this is a list which is having a list of queue items which means that all the transactions which are in new status are coming in form of a list right now to iterate the list i would need to loop through the list one by one and to loop use an activity which is called for each in the workflow control use the one which says for each drag and drop in the workflow for each activity and which is the item you want to loop so for me i want to loop the output of all items right if i click here go to the properties it has already updated the type argument to uipath.core.qitem. So this is the new feature which UiPath has provided. If you would have seen the previous versions of the for each activity, this type argument you have to manually select. I still have an option to go and update it, but by default, the correct type argument is selected by UiPath for me. Okay. Now for each item. So what are these items? This item is nothing but the transaction item, right? We can also go and change this here like this right so you can always change this name so now what do we want to do with all these transaction item for example i just want to get the name of the if i just go here let's see what data we have so we have the first name we have the last name and we have the address right so let's say we are interested only in the first name last name and address and i quickly go here and i create variables for string first name I just create a variable for string last name and I create a variable for address right all of them being the string variable I just want to use these variables to store the data of the transaction item now in here all I have to do is create an activity which is called assign activity I am telling UiPath that assign the first name a value now UiPath will ask me you tell me where is the value the value is inside these transaction item in the all items I have seen that there are 28 items from the 28 item pick the first item whose name is transaction item okay so I go here in the value I am telling that transaction item dot specific content right this is important dot specific content which means that which content you want to read from the queue transaction in the bracket in the double quotes you have to pass the key it is in the form of key and a value so if i go back to my orchestrator and if i open any of the transaction this is the key this is the value last name is the key benito is the value so we have to provide the key so the key is first name just copy this as it is and paste it in the specific content and just put dot to string because name is a form of string and the variable which i have created is also in form of a string right to get the last name again i just go here and in the properties i just type here str underscore last name and in here we just type transaction item dot specific content and it is asking me for the key so a key would come in double quotes right so in this double code i would just need to provide the key so key for the last name is nothing but the last name right i go here and in my uipath i just put the key here 
की शुड मैच देर शुड नॉट बी एनी एक्स्ट्रा स्पेसेस एट द बिगिनिंग और एट द एंड राइट दैट इज डन सिमिलरली आई एल क्विकली ड्रैग एंड ड्रॉप वन मोर असाइन एक्टिविटी दिस वन आई एल से एस टी आर एड्रेस एंड इन हेयर इन द प्रॉपर्टीज वी जस्ट से दैट ट्रांजेक्शन आइटम डॉट स्पेसिफिक कंटेंट एंड इन हेयर we just want to get the key for the address which is nothing but the address right i just copy and paste it back here and dot to string okay i hit okay now there are other items which are available such as there is status there are email right so similarly we can get all of this if you are watching here i want you to take a pause and let me know in the comments that what is the syntax you are going to write to extract the email id right so i have extracted only the first name last name and the address right i want you to comment down and tell me that what exactly you are going to write in order you want to extract the email okay so i'll wait for your comments and let's move forward here okay so from the transaction item i have got the first name last name and the address right to validate all of them i can use a right line activity or we can use a message box activity as well right now in here at this point i am only writing this values in the console once these variables are populated you can use this variable anywhere you can use them to populate a web based portal you can use them in a database query you can write them to an excel as per your automation right so for me i just wanted to print the values in the right line like this okay so i'm just going simply printing the value whatever we have received from the variables right so just printing the variables and as all of them are string so i no need to do any conversion as well okay let's save everything and i'll just put a break point here okay i'll just put a break point here we would run the automation in a debug mode so that we all understand what exactly is happening right i go here and click on this button which says debug the file the robot has started if i go to the locals and in the output you could see that there are total 28 items right so from the 28 items the first item which is being carried out is the transaction item okay if i click on step into you would notice that the first value which it is getting is getting printed here okay so as of now we have not printed the printing is happening here okay so we'll just go and get all this value then we print the first name which was shevon then it going to print the second name benito and it is printing the address right so if i again hit continue what would happen next time it is going to give me the next item so from 28 items now it would be the second item the second item is shevon pia and her address right so if i keep continuing this automation what would happen it will print all the first name last name and the address which are from the transaction items of the queue right so if i again click on step into step into step into so this time it is getting the third item why because we have used a for each loop which is iterating the items one by one okay again i click on step into marshall and her address right okay so now i hope you actually understand that how we can actually read the data from a transaction item from the queue in case you have any more queries on this just drop me a comment or feel free to write me an email on the email id which is available in the description and i shall create a video or i shall revert you back so that is all for this video i would like to wrap this video here thank you for watching if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation Thank you.